Hey folks, welcome back for more Temtem. This episode is a compilation of side quests and things and general housekeeping stuffs that I wanted to wrap up before pressing on. Also, side note, I know my voice is kind of weird today. It's because I've had a cough, it's fading, it's going away, but I have to record anyway because that's life. You keep grinding. You gotta have that mindset grind set, guys. I'm kidding, of course. So you're just gonna have to bear with it. You're gonna have to bear with this range, this tone, this awful, dreadful sound. Um, you're welcome, by the way. Anyways, let's just get to the, the to the thing. We're doing a thing today, guys. You're watching a video, okay? That's what you're doing. Anyways, I also want to mention, as this series continues, it becomes increasingly more obvious that there's just a lot to do in this game. And it can feel like a real time sink. And I, I've mentioned this before. I play for about an hour, an hour and a half. So like an hour and 30 minutes. And what you're seeing, like whatever I upload, tends to be at max maybe 40 minutes, right? 45 minutes. So that is a lot of footage to edit and, and go through. And it just ends up feeling like a forever task. Especially when you add in side quests into the mix. So in order for me to not you know, lose my love for this game because I, I do love it, but sometimes in editing it can just feel so overwhelming. And also, because I want to preserve my sanity, I will be not featuring and slowly start phasing out side quests uh, altogether. I'm going to start focusing on, on more of the plot. So I do apologize if you're hoping for a more detailed let's play in that regard. Hopefully in the future I'll have more time to balance, you know, the creation process, but it's just, it's been rough. It's been tough, this series, because it's, it's a long one. It's a long one. I, I think uh, at the end it'll be like 50 plus episodes of this and probably the longest series I've ever done in my life <laughs> on this channel. And so, I mean, you, 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 you understand. You understand me, man. You understand. It can be hard. It's hard for someone like me. Anyways, all that said, this will be the last compilation episode, so I hope you enjoy it. Okay, I hope you like it. Um, before we get started though, I do want to mention our sponsor, Squarespace. Kidding, I have no sponsor. I'm just a guy. You are dumb, unattractive, overweight, unworthy. Anyways, what did we do first? The first thing we did was what you're seeing now. Probably the A-roll. <laughs> Uh, the travel writer and engineer quest. So first things first, we did the travel writer quests. We told her about every place that we've traveled to. Pick your poison when it comes to dialogue, it, it doesn't matter. After that, we went ahead and completed the engineer quest in which you're rewarded meager pan sons. You know, I, I felt this many times that the side quests are pretty terrible, if I'm being quite honest. And if I could go back in time and I wasn't making a series on this, I'd actually look up like the important items in the game and avoid side quests altogether. It sounds harsh, but when it comes to like time slash the reward ratio, it's simply not in your favor. So a uh, hot tip, hot tip for <laughs> hot tip for someone who's already put in like a hundred plus hours into this game, avoid the side quests unless they have really important items. Look that up on the wiki. Save yourself the headache. <laughs> and then like only when you're done with the game, it feels like when you're done with the game, it really starts to open up. So when you're done with the game, then revisit the side quests. Is that mean to say? When you're playing this game, be sure to avoid all the side quests unless absolutely necessary. <laughs> Anyways, after that, we do the Bigu quest. Now, this is the one where you have the Babawas and you need to have the baby form of the Babawa. Now, this quest does have a special item. So I did hunt for the Babawa, you know, to breed the Bigu, which if I'm being honest, I probably should have just spent the money on the auction house to get them, but I, I did waste time to hunt the Babawa. I don't have footage of that, thank God. But <laughs> at any rate, I bred it, got the egg, gave it to, not the egg, but I hatched it, gave the Bigu, Bigu to the guy, and then he gives you an egg timer, which is really, really helpful, especially if you're into breeding. Next, the comic book quest. In this next phase of the quest, um, after professing my love to Laura, who then blatantly and bluntly ignores me, she rewards you with the equipable uh, double screen item, which is okay in a sense, you know, seeing how most Temtems are dual type and if you need to give your temp an item, then this one is good, question mark. 
But I, either way, there's still another phase of this comic book quest and where you need to, you know, get the signature and all that. So not completely done, but you do get that equipable, equipable, enunciate, stick album quest. Okay, so I just realized this, you know, a little after the fact, but you can actually get rewarded with how many stickers you have periodically when you speak to this person. After I collected 35 stickers, I got the building block item. And then there's like another round of items and stuff that you can get. It's all pretty, I mean, some of them are good, some of them are whatever. I can't think of them at the top of my head. Probably post an image of it right now. What's most important though is when you complete your sticker album, you get like a, a scooter or something, which I think is really cool. But I mean, again, that's more long game than it is something that can help you right now. In fact, many of these items aren't really mandatory aside from like the coward's cloak and stuff like that, which is just very important. I mean, aside from that, it's, it's okay to miss some of this stuff. I'm gonna be real with you. Gonna be honest. Anyway, the nepotism quest. Okay, so finally, we're wrapping this one up. Uh, we spoke to uh, the good doctor. I call him doctor. Well, he's kind of a doctor. Not the kind that helps people, but uh, Professor Constantinos. We spoke to him, and he was like, you know what? I want to give back to the community that, you know, has given him many things, I would imagine. And so he's, he wants to help out his community, and you can't fault Dr. Constantinos for wanting to do that. So he says, I'll take Fedra under my wing. I will help her get into university. And that is like a massive deal. Remember, most people in this Temtem world are incredibly impoverished, uh, starving. Um, they have very little access to climb the social ladder. It's very difficult for them to get a, uh, an education, like a real education, not just learning tetemology, okay? Not everything in the world has to be focused on these creatures. We mean like learning the basic, like basic math skills, basic communication skills, basic uh, science skills, learning reason and logic. So a lot of that is very hard to come by in the world of Temtem. But uh, thankfully, Dr. Constantinos, Professor Constantinos, he's going to offer Fedra uh, that way to get into the university because, you know, if we haven't, if we didn't step in, she would just go through the poverty mill, you know, be many, like many other young people who just, I mean, I don't know how they get by. We very, we very rarely see anyone working other jobs than, than this. Maybe they just disappear and die off. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say, really. Temtem is a very cruel world. But um, once we help her out, let her know that Dr. Constantinos will help her get into university, we get the item that is Iron Coating. It's an equipable item that gives that increases Earth Techniques by 10%. Now, this is an awesome item that I use forever. Like, I just, I equip it to Drakish because I end up breeding a Drakish that has Mud Shower. And when you pair it with Drakish and this item, you have a Tem that is multifaceted and, and can hit really well. So... It's, it's an amazing item, really is. Okay, so I'm not sure how we ended up here, to be honest. What you're looking at now is the salt mines. I take a little detour, I'm exploring Zadar. I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? I was speaking with Fedra, and then I was like, oh yeah, the salt mines are here, I could climb things, so why not check this place out? Now, as I go through these salt mines, I find it incredibly challenging. You know, several times did I almost have my ass handed to me. These folks, are tough as nails, and for no good reason, I might add. The Pansun reward was pitiful as usual, the XP was whatevs too, however undeterred, I saw it through the end, which was a whole lot of nothing. A really cool looking area though, but really pass this up if you're, you know, if you're curious, it's just, it's a whole lot of nothing here. But it's a nice looking place, well I guess if you're looking to grind like meager Pansons then give it a go. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a whatevs. It's Salt Mines is the whatevs place. It's a whatevs out of a whatevs. Okay, the Heartbeats quest. Now, this quest, if you remember, is from a guy named Jeremy. We meet this Arborian guy at Moose's Dojo, and he implores us to spy on his sister. That's the guy. This is the quest. Now, we make our way back to Tukma. And on the mountainside, uh, which takes us to the scavenger camp, if you remember, you have to actually climb there. Here you'll run into a few battles um, until you make it to the local tavern. And there you'll meet Elizabeth, who tells you, you know, that she wants you to check up on McCule. 
Um, if you remember, he's a dude who immediately started investigating the Narwhal crash. But by the way, they're madly in love with each other because they're just, I don't know, they're super like toxic in the Temtem sense and the relationship sense. They're really bad to each other, but uh, that's how they want to govern their relationship. What are you going to do? You can't save everybody. Plus, you wouldn't want to save them. They're grown, grown people. They can make their own decisions. So anyways, we check up on McCool and he tells us that we need to give him a Zazari because he's, he's looking for things. He doesn't want to be committal, but then he's like, after you talk to him for a bit, he's like, you know what? No, I do love her, you know, but now I got to make it up to her by, by you know, giving her a Temtem that what one of her favorite Temtems apparently, which is a Zazari, a Zazari, a Zazari, the snake Temtem. So he's like, I need you to go all the way to Kisua, get the Zazari, then come all the way back to Tukma, all the way back to the Narwhal crash site, hand it to me, and then I need you to go all the way to the scavenger camp to then check up on me so that you can watch me give her the Zazari, and then that's just the whole quest. It's literally a fetch quest. It's probably, I mean, there's a lot of, I want to say worst offenders in terms of quests that I didn't like. This was by far the worst one. <laughs> they're, they're, they're competitive. There's a lot of side quests that are competitive in, in the regards of like getting on my nerves. <laughs> this Zazari quest really taught me that if you see one new Temtem, even if it has bad SVs, uh, well, first off, when you see the one Temtem that you haven't caught, catch it, and then if it has bad SVs, keep it anyway, because you're probably going to need one for an NPC, and you don't want to have to do the run back thing. It is, oh, it is so painfully boring to do that. <laughs> so at any rate, he gives his Azari to Elizabeth. You get rewarded with the baton pass for all your troubles from Jeremy after that. Yeah, you need to speak to Jeremy, by the way. Like the quest doesn't just end there at the tavern. You actually have to go back to Jeremy. Oh, it's, it's, it makes you want to bash your head against the wall. Yup, 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 yup. And so the baton pass, what does it do? It restores 10% of max HP when a Tem enters the battlefield. So pretty good, I think. I don't know. I don't ever use it. Okay, so the Crystal Sanctuary is actually a really cool place. It's also known as a, a place of power, the Tawai Shrine places, if you will. And for anyone who was correcting me in earlier episodes, thank you for that. You must have a team of the same type of Temtems in order to take on these Tamers. So in this case, I needed a team of all Crystal Tems to even challenge them. I was really eager to give this Crystal Sanctuary a try, so I got a couple of Thames together, all of them Crystal, of course, you have to, that's the thing, <laughs> and I took them on 1v1, and honestly, the huge crutch that I really leaned on here was the use of my items, uh, because, you know, what I found to be the most challenging aspect to this gauntlet was, and is, um, simply having Thames of a certain level because what I ended up doing was I just ended up catching a lot of different crystal types in the wild and then using them to fight these tamers. Now I didn't go to tall grasses, I didn't level with these tams, they don't have the TVs or whatever, they're just wild tams that I'm now using, you know? So I, I would say that's the toughest part because many of my tams were under leveled, however Mudrid is key um, because Mudrid is uh, half earth and earth beats crystal so having a couple of them in your lineup to knock out these crystal temps was super super helpful now what's also cool about mudrid is that and i don't know if this is intentional or not i hope it i hope it is because that would make it a very good design choice in that when you capture madrids they're actually at a competitive level so that's a good thing you know as long as you have madrids with mud shower and maybe three to four of them in your lineup, that's good enough to fight these guys. Now, after the gauntlet, you're able to use the place of power to evolve your 2i, but honestly, the best part is being able to use the tall grass to level grind for the rest of your Thames. The amount of XP you get here is really, really good. Combine this method with the coward's cloak and you'll be surprised how quickly you climb the levels. Um, of course, as you progress, you'll take on tougher places of power, and eventually you'll want to move on to those places and make the grinding process easier. At any rate, we finish the cultist hunt quest as well, and then we collect the sweatband item, and there we are. Done. Easy speezy. Sort of. Really time-consuming. Next quest, the Egg Incubator 
quest. Now, I'm skipping ahead a little bit in the footage because with the incubator quest, you'll need a Gyalus egg, that red, awesome looking crystal Tamtam. -tam. Now, I want you to know, I totally caught a male and a female, and I totally bred them. And then I delivered the egg to the quest giver. I did not, I repeat, I did not buy it from the auction house for dirt cheap. Liar! And then shortcut my way through. I really, really, really did spend how many hours and minutes required to catch both a male gelias gelidoscope and a female one i did all of that i did not i did not spend 1500 pansons for an egg you're not the first man to get a thrill from using the auction house i see it all the time get out so after uh, purchasing the egg from the auction house and giving it to her she then tells me i need to have a hadoidi egg i also did not buy this from the auction house okay but after buying it from the auction house and giving it to her, then we have to deliver the invention to Dr. Akihiro, which you're seeing now. Where was your involved sensibility then? I don't have time for this. When we speak to Dr. Akihiro, we're then attacked by a weirdo, stranded businesswoman from a couple of narwhal rides ago. And she attacks us because... Uh, as, as luck would have it, she works for the Belsaris. After resoundingly beating her, he then... Dr. Akihiro rewards us with Drill, which allows you to hit a Tem that has Evade on. Okay, so the next footage you're watching is of the Earth Trial. Now for the Earth Trial, it's located in Kisiwa. Here you'll need the Earth Tems. Having Dropley here makes a world of difference, but I really did feel that level gap. However, with enough items and some grinding here and there, you can overcome almost anything. Remember, the goal of the game is to out money your opponent, okay? I did burn through a lot of items though, which will not bite me in the ass in the future. Okay, I'm predicting I won't have a single issue because I've used all these items. It's all easy sailing from here. All right, but jokes aside, uh, Vluffy was also super helpful here too. At any rate, we beat them and uh, we have new hunting grounds. Next, what you're looking at is the Kilima Range. Snow, yes, there is a snow area in this game and that did take me for a bit of a loop, a bit of whiplash, if you will. You can reach the Kilima range from the fishing lodge uh, in Kisiwa, and then from there, the lift takes you the full way. You know, if you remember, it was blocked out because of the invasion. Now that the invasion is gone, you can take the lift. This area, I gotta admit, is my favorite area so far. It's different, it's unique, and honestly, it's, in it's incomplete. <laughs> Like, as a level, there's not, like, very few new Thames. I think there's only, like, two new Thames here. The wolf and, like, a yeti-looking Temtem. And the items are pretty standard. There's a, a couple of quests here and there. Nothing to really write home about. Um, but aside from some level design gripes, you know, I, I, I love the way it looks. And it's different. And that's all I got for this place. As you move further uh, inland in the snowy peaks, you'll find yourselves in the Barafu Glacier, which uh, here you can catch the Yeti-like Tem, and then you can also take up another side quest. The side quest is kind of mid, also not going to lie, but if you complete it, you get a piano as a reward, which is not mid. That reward is actually really cool because you can play any tune that you want, and I've heard people like just walking and passing from people who've had it. They can make, make their own music from it. It's pretty cool. I don't have that piano footage, though. Did that off screen. I know, you hate to see it. Don't you wish you could watch it? I'm bad at what I do. Anyways, conclusion. That's it. <laughs> Oh, what an episode! You love it! I know, this one's short. This is why this is the greatest episode I have of Temtem I have ever made. You're welcome. I'm kidding, of course, and I am sorry. But yeah, last compilation video for the year. Okay, last year I made a compilation video. This is the one for the year. <laughs> it's a compilation per year, guys. I'm kidding. I, I think it's... Not, it's not been yearly, okay? Anyway, anyways, you, you, you get that I'm joking, right? You get that I am a joke. You get that this channel's a joke. So in future episodes, there'll be a couple of more side quests, but I'll, I'll slowly phase them out, and it'll be much more straightforward from there. Push the plot. Yeah, that's basically my MO. Pushing the plot. And we will push the plot in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, you know, and I hope you enjoyed this one, despite all of its faults, despite how uh, jumbled this is. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, 
if you enjoyed this video, this is the one that you enjoyed, if this is the one, guys, then thank you. Also, I want to thank Square- I'm kidding. Click out, will you?